What's up everybody, welcome back. Thank you so much for taking the time to hang out. It happened, it finally happened. I ended up getting that Android device that I said I would. And today we're gonna compare the DJI Osmo Mobile on this guy, Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus, and my iPhone 10. Let's go. test the DJI Osmo Mobile in a couple different areas. We're gonna test stability, motion time-lapse, active tracking, and we're also gonna compare the differences of the software. Get comfortable, because we're gonna test the DJI Go app and the native camera app. Alright guys, I'm completely impressed with uh, the image stabilization system on the Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus. I wouldn't be surprised if newer devices are performing in the same way. The optical image stabilization engine on the S8 Plus feels like it's a little bit stronger. It's not vibrating as much as the iPhone in this case uh, with the vertical shifting. I've been talking about the jitters and all that fun stuff for a long time. Um, and I feel the best way to improve this is by assuming ninja walking. Now when testing the native camera app, I discovered that the electronic image stabilization, that you know digital part of the stabilization where the phone crops the image and kind of like tries to keep it in the frame, it's drastic on the Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus. Also, I noticed that the field of view of the camera is a little bit wider, so that helps big time, kind of like disguise the shakiness. On iOS, you can turn that off by using Filmic Pro or the DJI Go app automatically disables the electronic image stabilization. Now, when you disable the electronic image stabilization, you're at the mercy of the OIS system, optical image stabilization. Now, if you were to turn it off and go to the native camera app, you will definitely notice a little bit of a difference uh, when walking normally. And for this, I recommend a proper walking technique. We call it ninja walking here, but it's pretty much like a marching band type of situation where you're putting one foot in front of the other and bending your knees a little bit. I feel that that technique, even though I might look weird when I'm in public walking around a crowded area, will make a big, big impact in the footage, making it look super crispy and very smooth. 
Now, as far as motion time lapse goes, it's pretty similar. You have the ability to select your point A, your point B, select your interval and duration. So there's no major difference on this apartment as far as the time lapse mechanism. Regarding the actual application, it's very, very similar. Major differences that I noticed is the lack of the slow motion mode. As an alternative, you can leverage the native built-in slow motion mode on the Android camera app, which is pretty cool. I personally shoot everything at 1080 60 just to be able to have the flexibility of slow-mo whenever I feel like. The other major difference is the inability to select your frame rate. On the iOS version of DJI Go, you do have the option to go from 1080 60, 1080 30, and you can do 4K 30. Same thing goes on Android. You can only choose 1080p, 4K. There's no wiggle room, even on lower resolutions. Alternatively, what I would recommend will be to leverage the native camera app. Now, for some reason, the app was a little glitchy. It was giving me a mic error. So even though I already granted permission uh, to the app to access the camera location, microphone, all that good stuff, it was still giving me an error. I don't know what happened there, but no active tracking is a very, very popular mode on the DJI Go app across the board. And it's available on Android. Having said that, the performance was all right. It wasn't anything out of the ordinary. And I feel that this is due to the lack of an actual optimization for this specific Android handset. The interesting thing about this whole thing is that companies haven't really optimized their software. On Android, it's pretty understandable that some companies might struggle with the development process or cost, since you would have to technically develop for every single app and optimize for every single camera OIS system. And it comes to show here, at least on the active tracking, on the iOS app, it's been always good. It feels super snappy, super tight. It gives me a sense of confidence on most situations. It's not 100% perfect, but it's really, really good as you've seen in this video and previous videos. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you have any questions, suggestions, or recommendations, drop them down there so we can continue to make content that's relevant to you. Once again, thank you so much for taking the time to hang out with me today. I really appreciate your time. Until next one.